Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome back to Intelligence on Chain. Today, we are looking at the Alchemy Exchange. They've got a proprietary token, and they are launching quite soon, if they haven't already. Wait a minute. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they've totally launched already. What the hell am I saying? Don't listen to me. I'm a degenerate. This is why I bring a co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kaz. As ever, thank you very much for the intro, Nexus. Fine job, sir. Thanks for recording today as well. Um, also, thank you to Mowgli, who has done an absolutely sterling job gathering the information we need for the project. And also a special thank you to Thomas Scoville, who was helping us retrieve the information about Alchemy. He's an advisor, um, who I'll talk about in a little bit. So, Alchemy Exchange. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is mainly the exchange. Uh, this was a lot more technical than I thought, to be honest. So we're going to look at a little bit about what an ad exchange is and what the problems are associated with the current online ad exchanges, what Alchemy are doing to solve it, and a little, tiny little bit on the ads token, what its purpose is in relation to the Alchemy exchange in the ecosystem, diving into the team, and um, yeah, seeing what they got, got on the score assessment. In terms of blockchain, you can get the ads token on currently on the Ethereum blockchain. The Alchemy Exchange has actually got its own blockchain. It's a layer one currently on the Constellation network. More on that a bit later. The ads token has been out since August 2021. And the Alchemy Exchange recently went from beta to mainnet on the uh, 9th of February this year. So that basically means it's open for business and we'll touch a little bit more on that and their partnerships a bit later on as a sort of high level alchemy exchange is a sort of hybrid web 2 web 3 product so probably more web 2 than web 3 i think the web 3 element is purely the fact that their solution is blockchain based but it's very much web 2 in terms of corporate structure um even the way that they their developers and testers work they work in what's called a a very agile format i know it's myself because i do this in my real life job um full time nine to five five days a week and the alchemy exchange which is alchemy alchemy labs product as i said is looking to solve a problem that is plaguing publishers and advertisers in the space with high fees centralization domination from the big two essentially like facebook and google um and a unfortunately a lack of value for publishers and, and advertisers in the industry now the ad exchange that alchemy produced will be decentralized so that will get rid of the centralization problem it'll be transparency is uh, transparent which we'll see with the ad explorer in a little bit have uh, cheaper fees way way cheaper fees fast transaction speeds and we'll dive into how the breeding process works as well with a rather entertaining diagram that i handcrafted earlier this afternoon so yeah as we hopefully you can already tell there is definite use case with this one you know this is a business and uh, actually in terms of competition as well this is the the very interesting thing there isn't actually much competition, direct competition to Your Alchemy brain. setup. There really isn't. There's there's competition in the industry solving different elements of, of the of online advertising problem, cookies and stuff. But in terms of like what Alchemy research, is doing, right? Not even that. No, they're they're different. Alchemy's problem is. V um, solution is very specific and I have to say they've done a very good job of explaining it as well yeah what's the difference between yeah. ads and brave yeah 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 so on their FAQs competitive space because they, they have had this a lot I think in their telegram um, they've gone through all the ones that well I'll say most ones I could think of and ones I never even heard of before so they've spoken about Brave and what they problem they solve and how it's different and they've gone to I've never even heard of Nyx before Generate which I actually used to use and I just sort of got bored of it and that pretty much is highlighted there Facebook and Google which yeah that's a different kind of different kind of war on that one it's a, well, um, it's a different kind of yeah they're fighting a different kind of battle yeah. on that front yeah, I, I just wouldn't engage with that at all. <laughs> it's just, you're not going to win that. You've got Veracity. I've, like, I've heard of VRA. It's, um, I'm actually quite bullish on that one. Their focus is more on specifically on esports, whereas Alchemy are specifically dealing with the publisher 
the and the advertiser as opposed to specific. Um, yeah, specific and bringing niche. up bringing up Google, the only th- like I mentioned pre-search earlier, the Google search ads, right? <laughs> that's where pre-search comes in. So pre-search yeah. has stuff that's targeted at Google's market share. If these guys aren't targeting what Facebook and Google are doing, then there there you go. They, they've got a different target. Yeah, I, I suppose in a way they are because you, you've got Google Ads and they they have like um you know their the Google Ad Manager or the rest. Of of it and alchemy alchemy's ad exchange i suppose would be a competitor to that because it, it deals with the whole end-to-end process of um, and which... alphabet owns youtube they also own google so ah, did not know that yeah so when these guys these guys are actually being kind in this this because this is the white paper right yeah this is the white paper yeah. so yeah they're, they're being kind when they talk <laughs> about double click <laughs> and the level of control that Google actually exerts. Google will totally exert all kinds of hilarious control and algorithmic preference mechanisms for advertising with regards to YouTube, and they use Google ad display ads to run Google's ads, or excuse me, YouTube's ads system. They do. Absolutely. You've got Metaverse as well. Um... They can actually, and there's a. They've got a partnership with Realm X, which is, is. When was that? I think that was late last year. So that's um, it definitely can do, and I think that's a big, uh, big win for them as well. And yeah, I said you've got. There's, there's a lot of competition you've spoken about here, and you know it does seem like they've. They're really confident and honed in on their sort of target, which just seems to be you know ad consumers and, and publishers and advertisers. So yeah. So that's that's the high level summary. Let's have a look at the team. So I've I've focused on three people on this one. I'd probably say like the three faces of alchemy. They've certainly been the most prominent faces that I've seen on the AMAs, on YouTube, and the articles I've seen as well. So I just wanted to focus on these two. Sorry, on these three. So Ben Putley, he's got a very, very, very strong background in advertising and, um, and growth. Very successful, as you can see here. Um, yeah, it's just tons and tons of experience. Uh, he spent a lot of time on that as well. And and he's he's also I think founder for a company called Affinity, which has also got one or two people from the Alchemy team as well. It's just uh, it's a I don't know too much about it, but high level, it's just a, it's um a luxury experiences NFT project. Um, so yeah, maybe we can look at that another time. Him, what I did notice on their videos is himself adam and chandra for short they seem to be form a really really good team bounce off of each other um and it does come across really well on their amas the way they speak and yeah ben recently been there working in new york and amsterdam i think paris as well um pitching to web two companies and really sort of you know highlighting the problems they've got showing them an alternative and also very confidently speaking at how easy it is to integrate you know, like a, a startup, you know, if I create a website, I could very easily integrate with Alchemy's ad exchange if I wanted to. So, um, yeah, he's a busy, busy guy, but he comes, comes across very well, uh, the videos that I've seen. And you've got Adam Chorley as well. So he's the second face of the three, Three Musketeers. And uh, he's also co-founder of Affinity as well. So um, it looks like, I think that sort of re-emphasizes the strong bond that they've got. That Because um, I, I can't see that they've met each other before from their history. Um, they just sort of sort of come to this point and um, and growing together really. So it does look like work really well. One thing I particularly like about Adam's profile, and I haven't really seen this on many, is one he actually keeps it up to date for a start, which is always a big plus. When you go to his experiences, there's a lot of detail. He really does talk about the I suppose like the achievements and why he transitioned from one job to another. I think that's really important because you, you can tell you can tell he's really it's not, it's not like a sort of copy paste or very generic wording like he's taken a lot of pride and care in his achievements in his career and that's that for me is a really really good sign so yeah I mean take a look for yourselves if you want to, if you want to but he's he's really gone in and spoken about all the targets and all the achievements he's made and referenced it as well so I was really impressed by by Adam's Adam's dedication to detail there and just how proud he is of, of his working history so that was that was really pleasing to see and then i'm not even going to try to pronounce his name just because i'm just going to make a complete hash of it so apologies but i will go with chandri as that's how his name is also displayed on the team website so chandri chandra sekar narayana 
What a great Perfect. name. Healthy Indian name. <laughs> Very strong. Very fantastic Indian name. And Chandri has got... He spent a lot of his time as a contractor. So for those of you... I don't know how it is in the States... But sit in the UK, what you tend to do is you set up your own company and then any money you make from contracts you work on, they go through your company. Um, it's more tax efficient way of doing it. So yep. he's got he's got nine years, ten months, and that pretty much covers all the contracting jobs he's done. You the can be a sole that... proprietor in the US uh, <laughs> without actually needing to form a company. That's something I do for my crypto mining and trading stuff. But uh it definitely can help if you have infrastructure, right? So if you're a software guy, you're going to need servers, you're going to need some infrastructure. So it'll definitely, yeah. for tax reasons, it, it makes it easier to account for the infrastructure. Yeah, so all the, all the numbers here match up. That sort of ties in line with the, the nine years and ten months of, of him being with his company and contracting. One other thing I really like about this is, as a contractor, rule of thumb, like, if... If you've only done like six month contracts or three month contracts, like your entire, you know, most of your career, then it doesn't really reflect well. You want to get to six months and then either be kept on. Um, and that that's something that recruiters do look for. And you can see here, you know, one year, two year, nine months. Well, oh, and I, I, I look at his shortest job, but look at what it is. He did a it, he did an infosec job for the Department of Works and Pensions. They probably yeah. need him to, him to do one specific thing, and then when he had achieved his goal, the job was done. Like it's yeah, <laughs> not totally, mate. And um, but yeah, a lot of this is really really impressive. You know, five year contract and stuff as well. So, sorry, um, a five year, one year contract, three years. That is really impressive stuff. So, I really like that from Charger's profile. The other thing I liked as well, and by the way, these are all these are all globally verified comp um, certifications. Uh, one of my friends is doing one of these. Uh, I nearly did this one, uh, not this one, uh, Scrum Master for my job. And I certainly work with people that have got these professional accreditations as well. So what this tells me is he is a very, very, very smart individual, very dedicated. These are all agile, principle-based ways of working. So what that tells me is with his background and certainly from what he said during his YouTube videos, it looks like Alchemy are using a uh, agile-based way of working, which I think he's very sort of leading edge. He's got some fantastic principles. It does also mean you'll be able to get updates out quicker as well. Um, they're more sort of like smaller piecemeal, but that will mean that there will be a fairly good It's a good modern rate. tech startup business paradigm. There's yeah, a reason uh, all the big boys use it. Absolutely. So that was, a, that was another really good thing to see. So, yeah. In terms of these three on the team, I am very impressed with what I've seen so far. Um, and then... Thomas Scoville, special mention, he's an advisor. He is on Discord, Telegram, he's absolutely everywhere. He's answered every single question from myself and Mowgli, um, questions from the community. He's handled some FUD really well. And I think from what I've checked from him on some videos and LinkedIn, he's a chief strategy officer. Um, he's based in the UK and he also has done a couple of really interesting talks about security and advertising. Um, very well-spoken guy, very interesting to listen to, very open. Um, yeah, I like everything I've, I've, I've heard from this guy and a um, special thank you to his, his answers that he's, he's given us for this review. So in terms of our usual checks, we just checked the dev wallet. Yeah, this was also a very good thing to see. The dev wallet was created primarily for Alchemy Exchange and all the transactions I've looked at have just been going, even filling liquidity or just carrying out exchange-based transactions. So yeah, there's absolutely nothing, nothing of concern whatsoever there. So that was really good. As always as well, we also run sanction list checks and I use Find My Pass to run UK and US-based criminal record checks as well, which is something you can do. And um, yeah, I couldn't find anything on these guys or any of the other team that I looked at. So that again was another big plus point for the Alchemy team. 
they are growing. I think very recently there was a video from three months ago where I think Ben mentioned that they've recently branched out to, I think, Singapore. I saw in Prague. So they, they currently have consultants based out in Paris, Singapore, Prague and India. So again, that's just another another plus point. You're just showing how far they're, they're growing as a business. So um, yeah, spent a bit longer than usual on the team bit there, but... Very, very impressive. Well, oh, they were meaty. They were. There's um, meat on this team's bones. It's proper business, this one. So yeah, it's the core team. So these are these are most of the devs. Um, I imagine they've got consultants that probably might not be listed on there. Yeah. So this is these are the advisors. So I mentioned about the Scovilles, not just Thomas. Um, it's also his wife as well. And I'm sure some of you keen-eyed people in the audience would recognize this chap, Benjamin Jorgensen. So, oh, alchemy. Yes. So, Constellation, famous for DAG. Absolutely. Constellation Network, Layer Zero. Now, the Layer Zero Estate channel is not actually the tech for that's not out yet. That's why alchemy, although they're still using Constellation technology, they're our Layer 1 let's, currently. Let, you, I was going to say, let's not call it Layer Zero. There, nah, there, not, there is no, the OSI has said there is no layer zero in the osi model uh, yeah yeah <laughs> no public at all um that's expected really because as i said earlier you know they're predominantly a web 2 corporate company so you find with a lot of those companies they have you know private githubs you wouldn't expect nike to have like a public open source github or you know adidas or people in the uk john lewis whatever they're they're, main, they're mainly private so it's no surprise no problems with that at all Alchemy's ad exchange. This is this is where we start delving into the technology side of it, and it did take me a little while to understand it. I've watched so many videos, I've asked so many questions. I think I've got my head around it, and I've put my own little um, low budget entertaining diagram together, which I'll I'll show you on my PowerPoint in a little bit. Alchemy Exchange itself is an ad exchange and a blockchain at the same time, which is essentially the facilitator between the publisher and the advertiser. What is an ad exchange? If you take a user, so if we take Pepe the meme frog, who's going on corn, cornhob.com, I wouldn't recommend trying to get to this website, by the way. And if you do, please clear your history straight away. When they type the URL on the website and they press enter, that whole milliseconds or second of you connecting up to that website, all of this process is happening in literally the blink of an eye. Now, what happens is the owner of the website will ask the user, do we can we get your permission to collect your cookie data and most people i think would probably say accept cookies on that now what that cookie does is it's taking information about your interests your you know your browsing habits etc and it's sending that via something called an ssp which is a supply side provider that goes to an ad exchange and this is this is what's happening in the real world on you know because there's, there's many ad exchanges out there and that is then processed by the demand side platform, DSP, which adds a monetary value to the ad space available on your website and the data collected from that cookie. And what happens is there will be a list of ads in the background and then the DSP will determine which are suitable ads. So from the six, pick three, for example, there'll be a bidding war going on and then the person with the best bid is the winner and that ad will then go to the publisher website so when pepe and the meme frog eventually sees cornhard.com he will see his ad and probably a lot of other explicit content that's probably the easiest way i could explain how an ad, ad exchange work and it, it's relevant for what alchemy are doing the other things i noticed on there is i've put prices and stuff on there for a reason because so i was trying to highlight the issues currently faced with uh, web 2 and that's things like third party fees so there's like taxes and stuff involved like third party taxes that apply to an advertiser so if an ad comes in at five dollars they'll be taxed to death and then only say like the publisher will get half of that and the publisher is also penalized as well from what i understand in terms of the ad space on their website so the data gathered and i think eventually published by the dsp makes out that there is more ad space on the publisher website which doesn't really create a lot of value so that's the other issue the ad exchanges are played high cost as we know as i've tried to highlight there not just in terms of, of taxes but in terms of if you wanted to view like pay for data that was um you know centralized you have to pay a hefty fee for that anywhere from like six hundred dollars to two thousand dollars there are a lot of problems both in terms of 
financials and you know just how the data is processed etc again where alchemy solution comes into it is it's decentralized so we'll have a look at the ad explorer in a little bit and i'll show you what that looks like all bidding information in terms of prices and who won is available on alchemy labs's ad explorer they are currently using constellations l1 state channel for it so those fees that you saw on the diagram like are just so much much more cheaper using um using blockchain tech now this just to clarify this bit as well when i read the white paper uh, there are industry standards out there that are used in web 2 in order for that to be like fully integrated from what i understand in the white paper alchemy would actually need to be on the layer zero state channel they're currently on l1 so yeah it's just something i read i could be wrong but i did read that a couple of times and in terms of faster transaction speeds we know how quick finality is especially with hypergraph tech just that will mean more bids will be able to pro be processed in the blink of an eye so that that's also another positive as well and just back to my point earlier the reason why they're not using constellations layer zero is because that technology is not available yet in terms of the ad explorer i've actually got a little example for you so this is live uh, this has been live since the 9th of february this year now these for those familiar with using blockchain probably see this sort of thing all the time transaction or sort of like a watered down version of it a transaction hash timestamp um snapshot this snapshot will be able to be migrated over to layer zero you know when should that happen so if we go into a transaction hash this is the this is the ads explorer you can see here during the i suppose like the page load of me going to cornhob.com there were four bids that came in so you know six bids that came in so you can see there showing six of six of these bids this bid was the winner and you can tell because the response id matches up here price matches up as well so it shows you what the winning bid was so cpm is cost per thousand uh, i don't know yep. why it's him i think that's cost per that's mil latin yeah something like that I don't know. cost um, per mil mil being the latin for a thousand so if what that means is for every thousand views of the website the website owner will get 90 cents so obviously the more hits um the more you'll make from the service so that's the winner and then you've got add delivery result so they won again this that's the auction hash choice that's a, a unique hash and then impression delivered so impression is whether or not that person um viewed the website which they did and then you've got these validator details as well which is node ids the alchemy blockchain uses a guardian and a masternode functionality uh, in conjunction with their consensus the guardian is the one that actually validates the transactions that happen via the ads add to the exchange so um yeah that's a little bit of that's the that's the technology behind it. this is you know and this is what this is the transparency that people will see that uh i think in some cases uh, most cases would otherwise be private there is more updates coming to the dashboard this has only been out what just over a month so the team are working on some updates they seem pretty bullish on some of the updates they've got coming as well in terms of what you can view so i'll be looking forward to seeing what that will that'll be in the very near future but um yeah, it's very much a work in progress there's other stuff coming i think it's gonna be quite interesting just how much data and information you'll be able to get and if they do join the layer zero state channel obviously other networks will be able to um link up and see this information as well so yeah exciting times in that respect so that's the technology behind it probably wondering what so what's the deal with the ads token what what purpose does that serve right i certainly was when i was going through this now by staking ads you you are helping out the alchemy protocol uh, um, project business and also yourself so by staking ads you are giving the advertisers the bidders that we saw in the diagram earlier the opportunity to, to take those borrow that that ads as loans to pay for fees on the network and then a portion of the loan that they take goes to all ad stakeholders so ideally the more volume they get the more people that stake ads then the better it is for everyone so essentially as ads grows as popularity grows as the fan base grows as the more people that use ads grows then everyone's a winner essentially so that's that's how ads intravenously fits within the ecosystem here and that can be done via their soft staking which i think came out this year um, which you can do i think via alchemy labs as well so yeah that is that's the technical side and that i think that's that's as high level and as simplified as i could put it um which is quite interesting now in terms of the tokenomics you've got 
250 million supply of ads. Um, it's been out since 2021, I think, from, um, from remember from memory, August 2021. And there is a bit of a, a vesting schedule. The team has got um, a two-year lockup period, which expires exactly on this date. Um, we haven't been able to verify exactly how much of the supply they've got, so um, I think Thomas is looking into that for us, and the figures will actually be published soon. But we've just gone with 10%, we have just assumed 10% based on the white paper for the time being. Um, I think, yeah, the market cap still, I think that's still quite a low market cap, so there's still there's still a lot of um, a lot of potential there. Now, in terms of the website, we do what we always do. We check on who is to see who it's been, who is registrar for it, and GoDaddy is another reputable one that we use, that we know of. And again, website is clean as well. There's no sort of phishing or anything going on, which is also very, very good to see. So that came out clean. There was an audit on both the token and the exchange, right? That was done, and it was done on the original, this is not, I think like the original version of the token, and then um, I think it's just a little bit on on like a beta version of the exchange. It is it is outdated, um, but yeah, it's it's just very very basic. What they ran there just to sort of check that you know it does what it says on the tin, as opposed to the actual um, things that we we normally look for in an audit. So this isn't to sort of cause fun. It's just to highlight this. This is very different from typical DeFi projects that we see, and they do conduct a series of security audits that they do, and that. I think uh, most of those are private, so which, as again, you'd expect from a company that's predominantly based on, um, you know, in in the corporate corporate mindset. So again, that's absolutely fine, and um, certainly not going to be penalised for that. So testing that was done on a private test net. They still got a private test net. Do you expect as they they work in this agile corporate framework as well, which is very popular, very successful. Now they also this is a really key thing, right? They join the global vendors list, um, IAB Europe, which you can find them on here. So if I just do a quick search and show you, just to prove it, so Alchemy on there. Now, from what I think it was Chandri that was saying, when you are pitching to Web two companies, trying to get them to get into the blockchain, get to this this you know this this new startup etc one of the first things they look for is are you registered with a vendor list if you end you're not really going to make it so this is one of the first things that alchemy um did and applied for and have successfully become a part of so that's really going to help um give them the best chance of of growing the way that they hope to in the you know in the short medium and long-term future now what this basically means is it, it is gdpr compliant so for those of us those of you living in europe i'm supposed you will definitely know about when GDPR came out. A lot of a lot of companies were panicking, running around trying to make sure they were compliant as quickly as possible. So uh, it was good to see that they've done that. And if we move on to multi sig, so yeah, there's no there's no multi sig. Most of the liquidity is on central exchanges anyway. So that's that. And you know the the primary business is with the ad exchange. Um, KYC team is docs. There's no there's no need to, for a KYC. They're completely doxed. Now partnerships, um, this relates back to my previous picture. Now, supply side providers, that is the people that are taking the cookie data and putting it onto, um, putting it via the ad exchange to be picked up by DSPs, which is the demand side providers. So they're set up with Prebid Server and Index Exchange. I actually went on Prebid Server's GitHub and I did find Alchemy on there, so I've verified all that. That's all good. Demand side providers, so one by AOL, it's massive, and Vice as well. Um, that's also another big win. So what that basically means is the more demand side providers you've got, then pretend, you know, effectively the more ads you can potentially capture on your ad exchange. So yeah, this is, you know, you can clearly tell by the ratio as well at the moment. You want to be focusing on this really, getting more ads in as, as much as you can. So that's what they're doing at the moment. These two are the most recent ones. Vice, I think was earlier in the year. Powerlink was late last year. Um, so yeah, the more of these, the better. And they've also got a partnership with Realmex in the metaverse. I don't particularly know a lot about Realmex, but certainly being able to put your ads in there is, uh, certainly another potential avenue of revenue for the business. 
Well, they're an ad business. Anywhere that no, somebody's willing it. to put up space for you to put up an advertisement of any kind, it's they, they will talk to you, looks like. <laughs> so, yeah, that is, that's the high level, I think, of the... The technology, a bit about the partnerships, how the ads token fits in, what an ad exchange is, how it works, what the current problems are, what the alchemy solution is. The Let's finish off by looking at the score report. Here now, we go. Again, Mowgli, thanks for this, mate. You've done an absolutely sterling job. I have added a couple of things to it. I took some elements from our blockchain template as well, which I felt were appropriate. For, Sorry if I've been um, quiet, gang. I've been a little bit distracted, but there hasn't really been a lot to say. It's an ad company. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so they scored really well on the contract side of it. The ads token is, um, you know, everything it expects. performs as advertised. It's very simple. It's a very simple contract as well. So um, there's not really much, um, much to expect. The it's not forked in terms of both the ad exchange and the token itself, so that was good. So they've just got max marks everywhere on that. There's not really any surprises. Um, there's no tax or anything as well, which is good. I can't stand tax. It's such a ponzonomic thing. Um, now this is um, one of the security questions we've got in the blockchain base template, which is. Um, I've amended it to say, has the exchange been penetration tested for our white hacker event or third party? Don't really know. I haven't seen any white hat hacker events, but as it's private as well, there might potentially have been a third party, which is quite common. Uh, I've seen it in companies I've done business for. So I've just gone in the middle and just sort of said um, unknown. I've just gone on the safety side, which I think is fair on that one. Uh, so has the exchange undergone prolonged period of community testing um it hasn't it's a private test net so no that's not applicable on that one but it's just to showcase one of the questions we do ask now it is a registered business um which is as expected they've been funded from binance as well which is a reputable exchange as we know so again top marks on that one when they're not trading against you on the back end that is hey <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had then, to. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, mate. And then, uh, in terms of GitHub, as we know, it's private, so we, we can't really comment on that. Um, it'd be interesting to see how quickly they can get updates and patches out with this agile format. So I'll keep keeping a keen eye on that. Um, they're not, from what I can see, so that's another good thing. Isn't another good sign there's no multi-sig uh, we understand why so that's no problem there um devs the contract owner i think this is pretty standard we know the team is public publicly doxed in terms of the owners devs because they use third-party consultants as well i've got three because we don't know who they all are um have you managed to find any other social history i oh, found some so i've scaled this down a little bit because I, I didn't really feel that putting fires and stuff was um, adding any intrinsic value really to the risk. They haven't run any previous unethical projects from what I can tell. As I said earlier, they're not on any sanction list or anything like that. I spent about a whole hour checking all that. So that was good. Yeah, most of the team have got, uh, in fact, all the team have got the experience for what I can see, so I've just put three. We're waiting for some info, so for the time being, I've just put a one. I've just gone off the white paper for that to say 10%, um, just to on the side of caution. So in terms of the audit, we don't really have an audit for the, the ads token. Uh, so I just put not applicable for that because it is a very simple contract as well. Doesn't actually affect the scores really too much at all um, based on what I've seen anyway. There's no marketing serv um, security conflict as well, which is something we look out for. Uh, it's not been hacked or anything. I know it's, the exchange has only been mainnet live since February, so it's not it's not been hacked at the moment so that's fine is there any proactive monitor in place um this was originally a no but because of the type of product they've got they don't actually need it for this one so i've put not applicable on that um it's a bit different that really applies to sort of like dexes and central exchanges so um that's me i'll, I'll tidy that question up a little bit can you prove that a discord server has been audited 
So I'll be honest, a lot of projects are not going to score on this one. Um, I've not seen anyone do this yet, but I think it's a very valid question. The other thing to remember is the alchemy form of communications tends to be medium telegram and youtube there isn't a lot of people in the discord so there is an argument to say well why would you order something that's hardly used they've got a handful of channels on there is uh, i'm still sticking with the score but it's just something to um, to be aware of that they don't actually use um use the audit that um the discord that much and obviously our website checks all came back squeaky clean so they've got top marks on that no issues with liquidity, a bit of ambiguity over the biggest well amount. So yeah, I think three, three is fair for that one. We definitely can prove the utility. We've just done that on the blockchain, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Definitely not a Ponzi. It's got a use case everywhere. Um, well, it's a, it's a business. They're providing a service. The service is ad publishing. Absolutely. This is a question as well that I've nicked from the blockchain template. Are there established businesses with real world utility or major off-chain oh, yeah. companies oh, using yeah. this blockchain? And they absolutely is. We've seen it with Vice. Yep. We've seen it with AOL and the others up there as well. So that's, again, that is a big foot in the door. How many of this is consensus? I've changed this up a little bit. I think I was probably a little bit too harsh. Hash, harsh graph is one of the most cutting edge for hypergraph is what they use here. So give them top marks for that one. That was Binance. So that's a five. That's why they've got that. Now, here's an interesting one. We normally use something called follower wonk. Because Twitter have updated their privacy, they've actually put a lot of businesses, a lot of um, API sort of third party research Plugins. companies out. Yeah, they put them out of business. So the one I normally use is going through a bit of a transition at the moment. And then um, it should be back up and running in about a month or so. So I can't actually do my normal checks on that, which is a bit annoying. There's no conflict of interest again from the marketing side. So that's good. Comms is absolutely brilliant. I think they scored a little bit low on this bit, but they've pretty much scored five for all the the, mod, the comms and stuff. And then, yeah, in terms of a score, 80%, I think that's really good. You know, accounting for, we haven't got an audit on the most recent ads smart contract. I think this is, I still think this is a really, really, really good score. And, they, you know, they've got utility, as you said, it's, 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 it's an ad exchange. I think they've done really well to highlight how they didn't fresh differentiate from potential competitors very transparent on how the data works there's a lot more you can do with it as well so and they've got all the ingredients to seem like an attractive investment to other web 2 companies as well so our risks spent a lot of time trying to understand what the risks were with this one i've just kept it generic but i think this one is another thing to be aware of you know undercutting from the competition someone else sees what they're doing and likes it they might decide to come in um or you know even a web 2 company might just decide to really lower their fees and undercut the competition there so that's something to be aware of and then obviously yeah these are all the references we've used as well if anyone's interested